Hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. I'm going to do my personal review of the recent Shazam, a.k.a. Captain Marvel movie. If you haven't seen a movie already, I highly suggest suggest that you go see it i highly recommend that you go see the movie because it's an enjoyable movie it's it's constant it's non-stop entertainment even in the low moments it kept me entertained but the purpose of this like i said the purpose of this little segment is my review of the movie now i've been reading comic books for over 30 years so before i get into my movie review Let's take a little trip down memory lane. Now, I was not born in 1930 or 1940. I was born in close to 1970. So, in the early eras of the 21st century, Captain Mark, I mean Captain Marvel, aka Shazam, was invented. From what I heard, he was a clone of Superman. But in my mind, he surpasses Superman. Yes, he can fly. Yes, he's practically indestructible. Yes, he's super strong, has endurance, and has super speed. Just like Superman. But the major difference between him and Superman, those are Superman's staple powers. They will not change. Captain Marvel, however inherited his powers from a top-notch magical entity, the wizard from the Rock of Eternity. Captain Marvel's basic base powers, super strength, super speed, flight, and vulnerability, etc. His superior power, which evolved especially over the last 20 or so years, is his magical base powers. And that's how he becomes superior to Superman. Yes, with his physical attributes, he will give Superman a run for his money. He will give Wonder Woman a run for her money. He will give the Flash a run for her money. The major characters of the DC Universe. I can go on and on and on. Where other super strong people like the Martian Man Hunter, Supergirl, blah, blah, blah. But those major three, Flash, Wonder Woman, Superman, he's on the same power level, if not greater than any of them. What makes makes him more special, those three, their powers are set in stone. You all know, if y'all have been reading Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam, for the last at least... 10 years, they changed his powers. In the old days, yes, I remember back in the old days, he just had those powers of Superman. But now, those authors and critics have become wise. They say, look, he got his powers from a wizard. The wizard could do more than just fly and have strength. He had magical abilities. He could create spells. He can create portals. And that's what they have get done for Shazam. And we have seen that in the movie. We saw a little bit of his magical abilities in that movie. And that's how he's superior to Flash. He's superior to Wonder Woman. And God forbid, I hope it don't give you no heart attack. He's superior to Superman. Because he can manipulate spells. And definitely with his magic powers, he can, he, he can definitely take out Superman. Definitely. Now, thank you for letting me take my little brief trip down memory lane. Now, I want to do my review of the movies. I'm going to try to the best of my ability not to give any powerful spoilers to turn you off from going to see the movie. Because I still highly recommend it. Now, in the beginning, an incident happened between young Billy Batson and his mother. During those couple of minutes when that happened, I said, look, man, this don't seem believable. 
I don't believe this. Because I'm because if, if something happened to a child, a parent would do X, Y, and Z to find their child. That parent, it didn't it just seemed like that was a weak plot in the beginning. Like I said, I'm not gonna tell you what happened between him and his mother. But I said something happened to him. And I said, that don't seem, um, that don't seem believable. Because a real parent, a loving parent, would do everything they can to do something for their child. But she didn't do it. And we learned later on in the movie why. So when we discover why she didn't do what she did, that made the movie seem more realistic and understandable to me. So that's, what, that's part one of my review. Number one, the ordeal with his parent. The second thing I found apparent, appealing about the movie is how Billy approached the um, Rock of Eternity. This not no spoiler, because you've seen it on those commercials. He was on a subway train, and uh, that subway train took him to the Rock of Eternity. But what I like about that, but what's not in the movie, but you know from common sense, you know from common sense, the wizard probably didn't just evaluate Billy. If he was a real wizard, you would evaluate multiple people until you found what he want. And you can see it from the movie and from comic books. The wizard, he was set aside with Billy. Before Billy, he had other people. What I liked about it, with those other people that the wizard found, there was multiple ways of getting to that rock of eternity. And you will see that once you review the movie. It just was not no one way of getting there. Everybody did not have to be on no uh, subway car to get there. Since it's a magic based entity and magic warps reality in a way, there were multiple ways of seeing the wizard and being evaluating to be evaluated by him. That's number two. Now, my third thing I did have a little description with with this. I'm not going to say I'm not going to get no spoilers, but when he evaluated some of the people, he did a certain technique. If you see the movie, you'll know what I'm saying. He gave those other people a certain technique and a criteria. When he met Billy, he basically just handed the reins over to Billy to hit you the Zam. For for some reason, he didn't put Billy to the same testing. That he did with those other people. He did not do it. He gave Billy the stick. As you saw in the commercials. He said say my name. And Zam. He became the Zam. But Billy. From what I saw in the picture. He did not go through the same testing as those other people. And he was a regular person. He was not honest Sam. Gentle Molly. Sweet Louise. He was a brat, as you saw before he got to the Rock Eternity. He was manipulating certain people in the movie before he got there. So he was not sweet Simon. Now, one thing that's different from, I guess, all the other people who evaluated him, as you saw in the movie, not the movie, I'm sorry, you saw in the trailer, Billy did start talking to the wizard. He said, wait, blah, 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 blah. I don't think the other people did that. They just was there helpless. So that's one good thing about... So I, I guess that's why the wizard probably chose Billy. Because he was able to think quickly on his feet. Other people didn't talk to the wizard like the way he did. So that, that probably, it probably impressed the wizard. This young man might have potential. He's willing to talk to me. He's make, he, the, wizard probably, the wizard probably was thinking he's able to make me re-evaluate re, re, the way I'm doing things. So that could have been why the wizard chose him. That's another part. Now, th another part that interests me is how he was experienced with his powers. Shouldn't a wizard... <laughs> if I gave you incredible abilities, incredible... Well, I can't say incredible wealth because I guess getting superpowers is like becoming rich all of a sudden. You know, like a lot of people, when they hit the lotto, they become instant millionaires. That's like getting instant superpowers. Five years later, they lose every last cent. So I can't complain that much about it. But if I was the wizard, I would at least give you a little idea of what you had. But the wizard, 
after he gave Billy the powers, something happened to him quickly. So he, he didn't even, he did not even stay around and give him the instruction manual <laughs> to say how your powers operate. He just he just said, "Here you go. You got my ability. We got my abilities. Good luck in figuring them out." That's what the wizard was saying. Good luck and figure it out. I don't care if you accidentally crush a person. I don't care if you accidentally top a building. I'm not going to tell you what you can do. You got to figure it out yourself. Like I said earlier, I guess I can understand it a little bit because I don't think when people be, I don't think when people become instant millionaires, I don't think there's no little course to tell them how to handle your money. From what I know, I never hit the lottery. They just get their money. Five years later, they blew every last cent. And you know that money is like a superpower. You can do it almost. If you if you get a hundred million dollars, you basically can do almost anything on the planet that you want to do. So that is a superpower. So my my little gripe was the wizard didn't give Billy no heads up what he could do. I do like now there are some things I do like about the opening scene. This is no spoiler. If you know about Shazam. You know about these characters. You all heard about this for years. You all heard about a Black Adam movie being made. I'm not spoiling anything. So the wizard did give Billy a little heads up on Black Adam. He never used the name Black Adam, I don't think. I could be wrong. If you see the movie, correct me. Let me know. Did he use the term Black Adam? I don't know. He did slightly introduce Black Adam. And if you notice... He introduced one of uh, Captain Marvel's, A.K. Shazam's, most prominent enemies. <laughs> that little worm. <laughs> Mr. Mind. I like Mr. Mind. I like him. That's one thing I do like about Captain Marvel, too. He got, <laughs> he got, silly, <laughs> he got silly enemies. I, knew, I guess it made back in 1940, they didn't want to make the enemies too devastating. So most of the enemies are silly and comical looking. They got powers, they devastate and all that, but they still look silly. Like Mr. Mind, a little teeny worm. I'm not going to tell you where he fits in with the movie. You have to see it yourself to see Mr. Mind. But he's there. So like I said, check out the movie, go see it, and you will see Mr. Mind. Now, when Billy and Freddy was investigating the powers, I do like how now in this modern era, they given Shazam the powers of Zeus. We can actually see it. When I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, I loved Shazam. He was one of my favorite heroes because he was on power with Superman. He was on power with Superman. That's what I love about him. But I say, damn. He got the power of Zeus. I don't see the power of Zeus. I don't see no lightning bolts or none of that coming from him. And you all know I'm telling the truth. Back in the 70s, 80s, probably 40s, 50s, 60s, he said he got the power of Zeus, but where was it? But luckily, within the last decade or so, they said, okay, let's, let's upgrade this character. He got the power of Zeus. Let's give him some Zeus-like powers. He got the damn big lightning bolt on his chest. So what, other than saying Shazam, that's the only time you see the lightning bolt. That's the only power of Zeus you see, the lightning bolt. So now, even without Screamer Shazam, he's able to manipulate that lightning bolt. And there's one another thing that impressed me about the movie. Now, we, DC drastically upgraded themselves. When it came to movies, all we thought about was Batman and Superman. Luckily, now they introduced Wonder Woman and Aquaman. And now, even more profound, they got another character who's on a level of Superman. Now, that's, that's massive. Like in a, in, a, in a Marvel Universe, Thor is equated with Hulk. So Hulk, not the only super strong person. Now, in DC have two god... Well, you can, you can add Wonder Woman there, too. Three godlike figures, but even more so Shazam. He got the DC introduced another character that's on par with Superman that can give Superman a run for his money. That what impressed me about the movie. Another person who got God like a, I mean, well, I guess 
all to behave as godlike, but you know what I'm talking about. I meant massive godlike abilities. Enough godlike abilities that can destroy a nation. That can easily destroy a city. They got it's another character in DC like that, and that's with Captain Marvel, A.K. Shazam. And that what impressed me the most. That power level. And now, since I'm a comic books fan, I always knew about that. But now, the normal person on the street who can care less about comic books, they know that, hey, DC have more than just Superman. Now, people know they got Captain Marvel who's on par with Superman. That's huge. So, DC, in a way, has overcome that stigma of always having sticking Superman up your butt and Batman up your butt. Those days are gone. Because now they can stick, they can shove Wonder Woman. They can shove uh, Aquaman. And, and now they can stick, shove you Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam. Back to the powers. It was interesting how uh, they was learning about his powers. And I was very impressed with that actor playing a role or acting like he was still young. He was very convincing. That's why I think you should see the movie. The actor who played Captain Marvel, Shazam, Billy Batson, even when Billy transformed into that adult powerhouse, the adult figure, while massive and huge and muscular, still tried to act like a 15-year-old boy. That was massive. I don't think most adults can do that. I don't think Denzel Washington can do that. Act like he's 15. I don't think Samuel Jackson can do that. Resort to the level of a 15 year old. I don't think George Clooney can resort to acting like he's 15 year old. Nor can Brad Pitt. They only can act like normal or adults of their age group. That was some wonderful acting by that actor. To bring, to bring the innocence out, the joy out of having superpowers. That was the big issue of Superman and Batman, even the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, or any Spider-Man. I think that the new Spider-Man, he do enjoy his powers a little bit more, but you know what I'm talking about. Batman, Superman, the Spider-Man who played Tobey Maguire, they did not seem to relish and enjoy having Supreme Godlike powers. In this movie, as you I'm not doing no spoilers. You saw from the commercial, he seemed to enjoy <laughs> having those abilities. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you enjoy being able to fly at excessive supersonic speed near the speed of light, which he can do? Wouldn't you enjoy being invulnerable to bullets? Heavily ballistic weapons, nuclear weapons, which he's able to do in the comic books. When you enjoy being able to lift massive objects like a bus, a train, etc. When you enjoy being nearly indestructible. I would. But in most movies, such characters like Superman and them, they don't seem to enjoy it. And Superman, he grew up as a normal human being. His powers really kicked in. When he was an adult, yes, when he was a child, he still had a level of invulnerability. He had a level of strength, as we saw in the movie. But it wasn't nowhere near what it is when he became a full-grown adult. He still could be hurt somewhat. That's what was, that was a, a blessing about this Shazam movie. He enjoyed his powers. One more thing I like about the movie, too. Like I say, you should take your family to see it. Or your girlfriend to see it, you have to see it. But the thing that I really enjoyed about it, even though it was a, f a friendly movie, it still had dark scenes in there. It wasn't all a movie about joking and laughing. People were still getting killed in the movie. Like I said, I'm not getting no spoilers. But people in the movie, they actually died. Gruesome deaths. But they had actual monsters. They not demonic figures. In that movie. So I said. It wasn't all. Fun and laughter. P. 
people actually thought in that movie. It wasn't our jokes. Like his family. I'm not giving no spoiler. But people, it was actually in a movie. And everybody in the movie, when they did their role, they was as serious as they can be. Yes, it was joking and laughter. Because remember, they was teenagers. So you know a teenager, they, they joke and laugh a lot. But I'm saying they were serious or believable while they was doing their particular role. Everything in the movie seemed believable. Everything in the movie seemed genuine. Everything in the movie kept your attention. I think the movie was about two hours or so or close to it. But it kept my attention so much that it went by in a snap of a finger. It was boom. Quick. So, this is my take on the Shazam movie. I think you should go and see it. It's a pleasant twist to the superhero genre. Now, I'm going to add one more thing to you about Shazam. This is what makes Shazam unique. Take a few minutes to think about that before I give the answer out. Think, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, why is Shazam unique? I'll give you 10 seconds to think about that. 10. Before giving my answer. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. One, zero. This is what makes Shazam Captain Marvel unique. From what I know, my personal experience, this is what I know. He's the only superhero who has a completely helpless human identity. Peter Parker, while he's human, he's always Spider-Man. His spider sense is always working when he got his clothes on. Bruce Wayne, while he don't have no superpowers, he's always Batman. If you sneak on, if you sneak up on Bruce Wayne, he will know you coming. Bruce Wayne, whether he's Batman or not, he got all his fighting skills. You get my point? Wonder Woman, whether she's dressed in normal street clothing or in that costume, she's always Wonder Woman. The Flash, whether he's working in his uh his science lab. Or fighting a villain, he's always going to be the Flash, no matter what. But Shazam, Captain Marvel was unique. When he said those magic words, he's back to a normal human again. Now, I don't know if the wizard augmented that human. I don't know if he's a little bit stronger than a normal human. I don't know. But from what we see, he looked like a normal human being again who can get shot by a bullet and get killed. He get his foot stuck in the to this, and he get his foot jammed in the door. He scream up with profanities. Ow! I've hurt my blinking foot. You walk on his foot, it hurts. It's, he scream out. When he turned to a human, Captain Marvel, Shazam, he's normal again, completely, from what we know. From what we know, when he said that was what Shazam, then he become the godlike figure. That's unique. Tell me if you know. Do you know of any other character in a comic book like that? Who's completely normal. And he's... Oh, wait. It's others who may be normal. They become godlike. But they may be an adult. They're in a, point A, they're an adult. Point B, they're an adult but with powers. No. He's completely different. Point A, he's a 15-year-old adolescent. He say the magic words, point B, he a 30-year-old he old man with vast godlike abilities. That's unique. That's unique. That's wonderful. If you know of any character like him, please let me know in the comment section. And one more thing I like about his powers too. The wisdom of... Well, oh, I said I'm not going to get no spoiler. I'm not going to get no spoiler. But I'm just going to tell you. I know the S stands for the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon. The H stands for Hercules. The, the A stands for, Z, uh, what's his name? Atlas. The Z stands for Zeus. The A again stands for Achilles. The M stands for Mercury. But in that movie, you will see 
he started using the wisdom of Solomon. I'm not going to tell you where. Go see it. Because you remember, he's 15 years old. He only has a certain way of thinking. But later in that movie, he started thinking like an adult. And that's where the wisdom of Solomon kicked in. So that's my take on the movie, my good people, wherever you are, on our sweet, nourishing planet. If you like my quick comments on the wonderful Shazam, A.K. Captain Marvel movie, please give me a thumbs up. If you would like to subscribe to hear future content on whatever movie I find that I like, not you like what I like, please subscribe. If you are already a subscriber, please click on that bell button so you will know, so you will get immediate feedback when I upload new additional content. Also, but I don't hear much, but I'm going to do it. If you like this video, please share it on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, or the competitor of YouTube. I forgot what it's called, but it's another competitor of YouTube. Share my content on any of those. You all have a wonderful day. And again, I stress that you should go see that Shazam, A.K. Captain Marvel movie, because it will not make you fall asleep. Like the uh, Captain Marvel did from Mar MCU, I fell asleep on it two times. But this Captain, the original Captain Marvel, A.K. Shazam, it will not make you go to sleep. It will have you laughing and engrossed and also disturbed by some of the scenes in it. So you all have a good day. Enjoy the movie. Take care. Goodbye.